Hi there everyone, this is Jennifer McGuire and thank you so much for visiting another of my videos today. So today I am revisiting my favorite technique, at least one of my favorite techniques right now, and I call it faux monoprint. I've done a video with this technique in the past and I'll link to it in the top right here if you want to check it out. In that video, I focus mostly on using background stamps. Today, I'm focusing on using all different kinds of stamps and different ways to step the technique up. I'll also be incorporating stencils and other products. Now, in this video, I made a lot of cards. Once again, it's a long video, but I had a lot of fun with some new products from Gina K Designs. She had been not having releases because of the virus. They live in a state with lots of strict rules, and I am so glad that she is back. So I'm going to use a bunch of her new stuff today. But keep in mind, this technique can be done with any products, and you'll see that in action. Okay, so let's get started. This is the new Gina K Nature's Touch Kit. Now, uh, Gina's kits are fantastic because there is more in it than any other kit that I've ever seen. You can see all the different products here, and I'll also show you a closer look. I'm a big fan of kits that are packed full, and this one is. It has two large 6x8 stamp sets, a 4x6 stamp set, a stencil, coordinating dies, and lots of cardstock. Okay, so here's a look at that kit. It comes in this clear box, which I love because I use these for organizing projects that I'm working on. So these clear boxes are fantastic. Now there is in this uh, the eight pieces of cardstock. These are different colors of Gina K cardstock. In case you've never used them, they're nice and heavyweight and come in beautiful colors. Then here is one of the six by eight stamp sets. You can see there are lots of floral images and different sentiments that you can build up. I'll be using the leaves on this one, that main floral image, and some of the sentiments. The kit also does include the coordinating dies for the stamp set. Next we have another six by eight set. This one has lots of great silhouette images, which are fantastic for many different stamping and inking techniques. I'll be using a lot of these, including the sentiments, the trees, the flowers, the birds, pretty much every image on here I did end up using. And then there is the four by six stamp set in the set. This one is so unique and I think could be used to make a lot of great cards for all that's going on in the world today. So I will be using some of the sentiments from this and also one of the hand images. There are many things you can do with this, so I'll probably revisit the set in another video too. Then there is a awesome stencil in this kit. You can see the stencil here, and I will actually incorporate this into my faux monoprint technique today. So you'll see this used quite a bit also. Okay, let's dive into the technique. I'm going to start by creating a bunch of backgrounds with the faux monoprint, and then we'll turn them into cards at the end of the video. I'm going to be using heavyweight cardstock for this. I think heavyweight is best because we're going to be using a lot of water. I use Nina Classic Crest 110 pound cardstock. I also have my Waffle Flower Mini Water Media Mat. That's that white surface there. I just like to use that when I'm inking because it kind of grips the paper so you don't need to put your fingers on it, leaving a fingerprint. I'm also using Tim Holtz Distress Ink. You could try this with other dye inks and with oxide inks, but I find Distress Inks work really well for this. I am putting down Distress Ink as heavily as I can. I am being very generous with ink. I want to put down as much color as possible. The more color you put down, the better the results will be. Don't worry too much about blending perfectly. This technique is great for those of us who struggle with blending. Does not have to be perfect or even nearly. Okay, so now that I have an inked cardstock background, I'm going to do some heat embossing on it. However, to heat emboss on an inked background, you need to make sure that it's dry. So I went ahead and heat set that very well, made sure that it was dry, and now it's time to do some heat embossing. I'm using my Hero Arts Misty stamping tool just so that I can get great placement. And then I have one of the silhouette images from the Gina K card kit. I'm using my anti-static powder tool pretty generously because again, I wanna make sure that that ink is dry and it doesn't hold any powder. I then am stamping the image with Versamark ink. If your ink pad is getting dry, you might wanna double stamp it just so you get a lot of that Versamark down. My ink pad's starting to get dry, 
so I just went ahead and stamped it a few times. You don't have to, but I always like to be sure. Okay, next I added clear embossing powder. Any clear embossing powder would work, and then I will heat set this. Next, we need another piece of white cardstock, roughly the same size. I'm going to create a little temporary hinge using some purple tape and tape the ends together so I can fold it like a folder. This just makes the technique easier, but you'll see me do it a few different ways throughout the video. You also need any kind of die cut machine. You're going to set up your die cut machine as if you were running a die and cardstock through it, but we're not using a die. Now I'm going to cover up the clean white cardstock and spray the inked cardstock generously with water. You really want to spray a lot here. You can see I'm doing quite a bit. The paper will absorb the water, so you won't have any puddles, but you can see I got a lot of water on there. I then am going to close up my pieces, put them between my cutting plates, and run them back and forth. And I do this a few times. So this is exactly how my machine would be set up if I had a piece of cardstock and a die. However, I don't have a die here. I just have the two pieces of cardstock smushed together. So I'm just applying pressure to it. Then I'm going to carefully pull apart my paper and look at that cool faux monoprint look that you get. The ink transferred from our inked piece to the white solid piece. And where the embossing was, we get a white area. I think this is such a fun technique and can be done in so many different ways. So there is our first example, and I'm gonna show you many more because there are many variations you can do to this technique. Okay, let's go ahead and create another background. I'm using ink blending tools to apply this ink. I don't really like using brushes for this because I want to put down as much ink as possible and brushes put a softer amount down. It is best, I think, to take your ink pad and go direct to paper, as you see me doing here, to put a lot of ink down and then you can use the blending brush to kind of spread it and do a bit of blending in the middle there. But again, put down as much ink as possible. I heat set that to dry it. Now I'm using my anti-static powder tool and I'm doing the same image once again, stamping it with Versamark ink and then adding clear embossing powder and heat setting. Basically what's happening when you do the clear embossing is it's trapping that color underneath that so that it keeps that image preserved when we do the technique. Okay, so I'm taping a piece of white cardstock to it. Gonna just make sure it folds nicely, makes it easier to do the technique. Put it in my little box here so I don't get water all over my desk. Put a scrap piece of paper to protect the white cardstock. Then I'm going to spray this generously once again. You can see how the ink in the cardstock absorbs the water. You could try this with watercolor paper, but watercolor paper is more expensive. This worked just as well, and I think this actually worked a bit better. So I fold it pretty quickly, run it back and forth through the machine a few times. You can ink up a bunch of backgrounds and set them to side and come back to it later to do this technique if you want, but you want to move quick from spraying it to folding it and putting it into uh, the die cut machine. After I've dried this, I'm going to take that background on the left and step it up. We're going to add some monoprint with a stencil. First, we need another piece of cardstock. On this one, I'm putting down a heavy amount of Distress Ink once again. I'm going to take my flower background piece, lay it in my die cut machine, put a stencil on top of it. Now I'm going to take that new inked background, the blue and green one to the right, and I'm going to spray that generously with water. You want to spray it so that it absorbs and not puddles. If it puddles a bit, you just want to dab some of that off. Now I'm going to take this quickly, put it down on top of this stencil, and then put my cutting plate on top and run it back and forth. What will happen is our new inked piece, some of that ink will transfer onto our flower background, creating a fun soft pattern. And the, the stencil itself will make an impression on the cardstock. And the cool thing is, is you end up with two backgrounds here once again. Now this looks a little bit dark there, but look at these when I let them dry. So I made all of these at once. That middle one was the one that we started with. We did the faux mono print to get the one on the left. Then we did faux mono print with a stencil with that right piece on the middle piece. And so we have three unique looking backgrounds. So you can see here how the stencil made a little bit of an impression there. Really cool looking in real life. It's like a suede kind of look. 
And then we have the other background on the right, which is one of my favorites from today. This is a really fast way to create a beautiful, unique background with soft, subtle texture. And I will share more examples using stencils in this video. Okay, next let's do this night sky here. I think this is a great example of showing that you can use any images to create a clear heat embossed scene on an inked background. So I inked up my background, dried it, and now I'm clear embossing these trees and the ground uh, right on top of it. After I've heat set that, I have another piece of white cardstock, create a little hinge with some tape here. Then I will spray the inked portion. And this is something that I think is very important to do. Take a dry cloth, a Kleenex, paper towel, a dry cloth, whatever, and just dab away the water that is resting on those large areas of clear embossing. If you're using a detailed stamp for your clear embossing, you don't have to worry about that. But these trees had some larger areas you get a cleaner looking impression if you dab away some of that water that's resting on the clear heat embossing. So there you go, look how clean that image is. And I like that it automatically looks kind of like a night sky with some clouds in it. And we'll add additional stamping to this later in the video. So that's another way that you can step it up. Here's another pair of examples I did in the same way but different colors. On this one, I didn't dab away the water that was sitting on the clear embossing and see how it kind of smooshed out and made it really muddied looking on the right. So dabbing off of large areas of clear embossing is very beneficial, which you'll see me do. Okay, let's do another example here. With this one, I have another tip that can help with this technique. You can see I use darker colors generally for this because more color transfers. However, here's another thing that you can do. So this is a background that I had inked up, dried, and clear heat embossed a branch on. After doing that, I'm going and adding more ink on top. So the clear embossing will resist it, that's fine, but I'm putting more ink on it so that when we spray it and squeeze it, it'll even transfer more. So it looks like a hot mess here, it looks terrible. But just wait a moment, I'm going to create a hinge with white cardstock, cover the white, spray that inked portion pretty generously, I am going to take a dry cloth here and dab away the water that is puddled on the clear embossing. Because remember, the clear embossing won't absorb that water, so it'll kind of puddle on it. So we want to remove that just the best you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. Then I'm going to close it up quickly, put it between my two cutting plates, and go back and forth a few times. I do find going back and forth a few times helps to transfer more ink. If you don't have a die cut machine, you could try using a rolling pin or press it as best as you can on your own. And check out how beautiful that transfer is. This is a very simple one, so I can add more to this with stamping and heat embossing later in this video. So even small images work great for this. Here's another example where I use small images. I inked up a background, dried it, and clear heat embossed a bunch of leaves over the background. I just repeated it. Then I'm going in and adding more ink on top. You could skip this once again if you wanted to, but by adding more ink here, it'll end up transferring more color to our other piece. That Twisted Citron's a little bit lighter, so by adding more, it'll transfer more color. Okay, so we're going to create the hinge with some white cardstock. We're gonna spray this with water. Now I notice I did have a couple puddles of water, so I'm just gonna do a quick dab with a dry cloth. Then fold it, put it into our die cut machine, go back and forth, and then pull the pieces apart carefully and look at that fun look that you get. Now I do recommend drying these so you can see what the final results are. These you can trim down and add something simple to it. These backgrounds are great for simple cards. My other video was all about using background stamps, but here you can see you can use small images repeated. So I created a bunch of panels using this technique, so pairs of panels, and I did a lot using the kit that I showed you earlier. Here's another pair. Well, let me show you some other images just to show you the versatility of this. On this next one, I'm using the Gina K Designs Macramade with Love set. This is such a cool, very unique set, but I thought I would just use that top large image to create kind of a backdrop for a sentiment using the faux monoprint technique. I didn't use the sentiments from the set, but be sure to check them out because they're great. Okay, so I created a inked background, dried it, and clear heat embossed that image onto the center. 
Now I'm adding more ink on top. You could skip this if you wanted to. Really loving the picked raspberry and the abandoned coral together. So now I'm gonna wipe the excess ink off of that clear embossing powder. And then we will create our little hinge with white cardstock. Spray that generously with water. Because there's pretty much a, there's a pretty good amount of clear embossing on there, I will just dab that area to remove any puddles. Then fold it up quickly, put it into our two clear cutting plates, and run it back and forth. So after I cut this apart and let it dry, check out how cool those backgrounds are. So you can just create simple backgrounds for focal points using this technique. Okay, I have one more example with stamping, then we'll do some more stencils. This is the Gina K Designs Graceful Greenery stamp set. I really like the looks of this. This one would be great for just simple coloring or some fun techniques, but I thought I'd try it with the foam monoprint today. So I followed the same process that I showed you earlier, and here are the two different backgrounds that I came up with. I like that it gives two very different looks for the same image, and you create them both at once. Okay, let's have some fun with stencils once again. So with this one, no stamping, just stencil on the background. So I have a piece of white cardstock here. I put it onto my cutting plate, and then I'm going to put my stencil on top. I have another piece of cardstock that I inked generously with uh, Distress Ink. Now I'm spraying it generously with water, and then I will quickly take that and lay it on top of the stencil. I'm going to run this back and forth just like before. And what will happen is the ink will transfer through the stencil, and the stencil will also make an impression on the cardstock. Even the back of the cardstock looks cool here. So now the white piece has color on it, and then this piece looks softer in different areas thanks to the water interacting with the distress ink. So there are the two backgrounds you get very quickly with this technique. And if you look closely, look at that cool impression. It looks like an impressed, um, impressed suede. I don't know. It's just a fun, unique look that you can do with any stencil you have. Okay, let's do another one with stencils, but a variation. This time I have two pieces of cardstock that I covered with Distress Ink, one in Lucky Clover and one in Chip Sapphire. So just white cardstock covered heavily with ink. I'm going to hinge those together so I don't have any white cardstock here, and I'm going to generously spray one of them. Now it turns out I didn't need to do the hinge. You'll see me undoing it, but I wasn't really sure where I was going with it at first, so you can skip the hinge. But I sprayed the chip sapphire piece generously. In fact, it was a little too generous, so I'll dab away a little bit of that uh, water. Now I'm going to cut up that hinge because I don't need it, and I'm going to put a stencil between these two pieces. The stencil will cause the um, inks to transfer from one another in between the openings. So watch, I have my blue wet piece, put the stencil on it, put the green inked piece on top, and then squish it as we go back and forth. And the ink will transfer between the two pieces in the open areas of the stencil. The water causes that ink to move, the pressure causes it to transfer, and look at this. So some of the chip sapphire transferred to the green, and some of the green transferred to the chip sapphire. You may see sparkle on that, that's because my stencil was dirty, I was too lazy to clean it, but I think it's pretty cool anyways. So you can also transfer between pieces. Okay, let's do another example of this. I have one inked piece here that I'm putting onto my cutting plate, putting the stencil on top of it. This time I knew better than to create a hinge. I'm just generously spraying my blue inked piece, that's um, Mermaid Lagoon ink. Spray that generously, but this time I'm also going to add a little bit of shimmer spritz. Now my shimmer spritz is running out and the, um, the nozzle was dirty, so I got these like big splotches, you'll see me do it here, but I, it did add shimmer to it. So I cleaned my nozzle for the future ones, but I'm doing mostly water and just a few sprays of the uh, shimmer spritz. So now we'll have some shimmer to our background. So I sprayed water, a couple of shimmer spritz, and then more water. You can see I got the same amount of water on that paper as in the past. Lay that down on top, cutting plate on top of that, run it back and forth to apply that pressure. And look at the back of that paper instantly. It already looks cool. And what's happened is the colors have transferred to the other pieces. We have some shimmer 
and we have the impression. Now you could use two very different colors and see more of the transfer, but usually the darker one will transfer more to the lighter background. Here's another example. This one's covered with festive berries distress ink, spraying that generously with water, a little shimmer spritz. On my die cut machine, I have a background that I created with abandoned coral and uh, a carved pumpkin. And that one is dry. I'm going to lay a sun stencil on top of the dry inked panel, which is in my die cut machine here. Then we'll do the inked uh, wet piece on top of that. So some of the red from the inked wet piece that we put on top will transfer through the stencil onto our softer color dry background. Once again, you can see the back looks cool also. And check this out. We have the impression of the stencil and we have that color that went through. Beautiful and easy, even faster than doing ink blending. Okay, so there we have a bunch of backgrounds. Now I'm going to turn some of these into cards and also step some of them up a bit so that you can really get creative with all of your products. Let's start with this pair of examples, the first ones I made in my video. Now I have here a Gina K Designs Elegant Script Stamp. This is an older one that I've always liked. I have one of my inked pieces and I'm putting adhesive temporarily on the back so that I can line it up with that text print, close the MISTI upside down, flip it over, and now my paper is positioned straight with the stamp. Now I'm going to use some Gina K Designs dye ink. Any ink would work for this here. This is bubblegum pink, and I'm gonna stamp that on top. What will happen is the clear heat embossed image will resist that ink, and we'll just have the stamping around it. It's just a way to add more interest to this. Now this ink will dry and soften a bit, but I do want to wipe away the excess ink that's on the clear heat embossing. Now to finish this card, I used a new great die set from Gina K Designs. This is the Master Layouts One die set. These are very helpful to anyone who has trouble measuring how to create different background pieces that layer together nicely. So look at how you get the perfect mat for that piece using the dies, and it looks great on a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card, like the white piece you see here. It also has the two layering rectangles that go across a card nicely, and then the two layering ovals. Now, I think this die set sold out very quickly from last night's release, but she is getting more in. So you just want to hit the notify me button over at um, the website, and you'll find out when more come in. I'll use them again in future videos. I just think it's really handy for anyone who has trouble measuring mats for your card. So for my example, I use the two larger rectangles. The smaller of the two, I cut from my inked background, my ink floral piece. Then I use the largest rectangle to cut from three pieces of white cardstock to create some dimension. Here's one of them here. You can see I cut that. Now, this is gonna be hidden behind our inked piece. So why not die cut from it? So I die cut just because from it, and then I can use the just because on my card. And now I can glue my inked rectangle on top of it and no one will ever know that I use that white cardstock in the middle. Now I'm generously using Gina K Connect Adhesive. Actually, it's not a lot of adhesive in one spot. I spread it out because this has a little bit of warping to it that I wanna make sure that I flatten. Another way that you can flatten warping of any of these pieces is to run it through a laminator before using it on your card. Okay, so you can see how we have a nice mat here. And then I glued two more mats behind it and then added it to a white four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. Here using the Just Because die, I die cut each word three times from white cardstock and glued them together for dimension, and now I'm gluing them onto my card. White die cuts and a white note card and white mats are really nice when you have bold color like I do with this pink and blue card. Okay, let's create the partner for this one, the other piece that we created with that technique. So I used the master layout dies to create this white panel and the pink panel. So you can see how they layer together nicely. Then I'm going to add that onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. And then I have my soft inked piece that I trim down and I'm adding right to the center of the card. So by adding lots of layers and mats, you can add interest to a simple design and keep that simple um, you know, inked piece in focus. Next, I white heat embossed Hello Friend on a black cardstock strip. 
I want to glue this on the card, but I want some dimension behind it. So I have another black cardstock strip that I'm building layers up behind the clear heat embossed pieces. So I put three layers on the back of each. I like to add dimension to thin pieces like this using cardstock instead of foam tape because I feel it holds up better and is less wasteful. This is a great way to use scraps. I want to make sure this is straight. This is a simple card without much on it. So if something's crooked, it'll stand out. So I'm using my T ruler. I line up the edge with my card, put liquid adhesive on the back of my sentiment and line it up with the edge of the T ruler. Using liquid adhesive is great here because you can kind of slide it around and wiggle it till it's just straight and perfect. Okay, next I'm adding some gemstones. These are new ones from Gina K Designs. I like them, they're called Dazzling Diamonds. They're clear with silver on the back, so they show up super nice on a card. I used those on this card on the right, and on this one, I used her new iridescent ones. So there you can see how adding stamping to that inked background adds a little bit of interest. And here I kept it very simple with lots of matte layers. And there you can see those dazzling diamond gemstones. And by the way, that hello friend is from that stamp set that I showed you that's included in the kit. Okay, so now I have the background piece that I created by using the clear embossing and the stencil. For this, I kept it very simple. I trimmed it down, added it to a white note card, and then added a stacked white die cut that says thankful. I also used the iridescent gemstones, which allows, um, which kind of like picks up the color of whatever card you did. So a little subtle, but catches the light nicely. Okay, next up I have the night sky looking ones. We're going to add some stamping to this. So you can take any of the backgrounds that you make with faux mono print and add more to it with stamping, kind of build a scene. So I have my piece here and I'm just using some more of the images from the kit and I'm stamping that with a very light ink. Now, if you want this to show up more, you can use a darker ink. I chose a really light ink and ended up stamping it a few times, but it does soften. Now, you could build up the scene with more heat embossing or with white pigment ink, totally up to you. I wanted to go for a subtle look. So I used Ocean Mist on the piece on the right, and I used a, I think it was Lovely Lavender on the one on the left to create the additional trees. Now I'm not making the partner cards for this because I messed them up. My blue and green one was kind of muddy and on this one I tried something that didn't work. So I'm just going to use the two heat embossed ones that you see there in the middle to create some cards. Sometimes you try things that don't work, that's okay. One of the great things about using a technique that creates two cards at once is even if you mess up one while you're trying something, you still have the other. So here I am just gluing uh, thin strips of Gina K silver metallic cardstock above and below our little inked piece. And then I'm cutting two thin strips of white cardstock to add to that. So this will help to make it look like we matted it with pieces of silver and white, but we didn't, we used up scraps and it creates less bulk. So if you want to make sure your card's not bulky, this is a nice trick. Now after trimming off the excess, it's time to add a stamp image and some accents. So I used two great sentiments from the Graceful Greenery stamp set. These are beautiful sentiments. It works great with these backgrounds. I used a white gel pen just to create little dots on the sky for what the look of stars. And then I also added a few silver iridescent stars that I had in my stash. Now, the nice thing about the technique that we did is it makes the um, night sky look a little cloudy. See how it looks like that? It's almost mist -like, misty like. I don't know. It's really cool. So you can use this technique to create scenes also. I bet you could do some really cool galaxy skies using lots of bold colors. And if you want your transferred piece to have more color, be darker, you can do the faux monoprint technique a couple times on the same background to build up color. Okay, let's move on to the bird and branch cards. So in this one, I added more stamping to one and then kept the other very simple. And I like that one so bold and one soft. On the piece with the, ink emb with the heat embossing, I wanted to add some soft rays coming out of the corner. So I pressed my white uh, pigment ink pad onto my glasswork surface and I'm taping my stencil in place. This time I'm using a blending brush just to apply some white ink onto the background from the corner. The reason I put my white ink on my work surface is I didn't want to actually transfer any color onto the ink pad. 
Now I thought that was a little too intense, so I just went ahead and wiped some of it away for a soft look. Then I wanted to add more stamping to the background. This was a little too simple for me, so I'm using that Elegant Script background stamp with some Gina K Peach Bellini ink and stamping that on top. Remember, this ink will kind of dry and soften and will have that soft look of stamp texture in the background. Okay, after that, I went ahead and heat embossed a little bird and sentiment onto it. The bird and the branch are included in the kit and I used white embossing powder for the bold background on the right. So you see with sympathy and the bird are in white embossing. And then I added a gold metallic, metallic thread bow and some pearls. For the lighter card, I did gold heat embossing of a thank you sentiment and the bird, both are from the kit. And then I added some gold cardstock strip scraps to the side there, that's a mouthful, and then also some soft pearls. So you can see how these two cards have very different feels to them. One's much uh, more intense, one's much softer, but they were created at the same time using that faux monoprint technique. Okay, so I'm just moving through some of the different backgrounds I made. On this one, I cut down our inked piece just to be that focal point oval. And then on the background there, I used Gina K's silver metallic cardstock and made an impression with the stencil. Sometimes that's the perfect technique for creating a subtle interest on a background. Okay, for this, you just follow the instructions on your die cut machine. For my Spellbinders machine, I put down a metallic shim, which you could skip if you wanted to, an embossing mat that has some flexibility, some cardstock, and then my stencil. Then I put the embossing plate on top and go back and forth. That embossing mat in there, the brown piece, has some flexibility to it. So what happens is the stencil makes an impression on the cardstock. So you'll see here that it's very subtle, but just the perfect backdrop for the focal point that I'm going to add to this card. So here you can see the completed card. I just trimmed it down and added it to a white note card. I used those layering dies that I showed you earlier to die cut the oval from one of our inked pieces and then the fancy oval around that. I stamped hello from the card kit and then I used the Gina K friend die, it's an older one, to die cut from black cardstock and add it on there. Now the partner one for that is much more intense, that's the one on the right. I trimmed that down and white heat embossed hello and used a white die cut on that. I also used some of the Gina K gemstones just for a soft bit of interest. Those iridescent ones are great if you want something subtle that, that kind of catches the light. And on this one, remember, we have that texture that we created with the stencil by making the impression. I really like how these two cards were made at the same time, but they look completely different. Now here's another example that I did with the same design and I just trimmed it down and I matted it with some white cardstock, added it to a note card, and then also added a silver thread bow right on the center. Little accents like that are great for these simple cards where we want to keep the focus on the sentiment and the technique that we did. I like that this technique also makes me feel like I did watercolor, even though I really am not great at watercolor. It just gives that look. Okay, let's move on to our leaf backgrounds. Now this one I kept super simple. I used a beautiful new stamp set that's called Fancy Greetings from Gina K Designs. And with sentiments like this that are so ornate and beautiful, you don't need much else, which makes for a great fast card. So I stamped one of the sentiments onto an oval from the layering die set and added it to our leaf background on a note card. Super simple. Now the partner card I kept simple also. I black heat embossed that flower from the kit right onto our inked background. And I also black heat embossed a sentiment next to it. I added some of the dazzling diamond jewels to that and a black mat around it. You can see how this technique is nice because it gives that smooth background that you can stamp directly on. And this technique is also good for images like this that you may not want to take the time to color but definitely want to use. Okay, next we have our pair of macrame cards. This one is one of my favorites. I just think it's a great backdrop for the sentiment. So I die cut from white cardstock, the thankful die cut, and white heat embossed for you right underneath it. I added up lots of layers using that layering die set, all from white cardstock, and added it to a white note card. I also put a few pearls here and there. 
And then here is the partner card, which is a much softer look. I trimmed that down, tied way too much silver metallic thread on the top. I think I'll redo that. And then I stamped Kindness Goes a Long Way from the Graceful Greenery set. Two totally different feels, but both created with the same technique. Now this next one I'm going to go back and make more of because that stencil technique was really easy to do and the background's beautiful. All I did was trim it down and add it to a white note card. Then I added a white die cut heart where I stamped with all my, which is from a sentiment that says with all my heart that's included in the kit. Instead of stamping heart, I used the Gina K Designs heart die. I die cut twice from white cardstock, once from black and glued them together. Then I covered it with Gina K Crystalline Drops, which just gives a clear dimension, and it makes that heart word stand out even more. I then added some holographic cardstock die cut hearts that I had left over in my stash, and it creates a very quick and simple card. Here's another one using one of our faux monoprint stencil backgrounds. I did stamp the hands with black ink, and that's from the card kit, and I used a white gel pen to add a little bracelet on her arm. I die cut from purple cardstock a heart and white heat embossed with all of my heart. Take a close up look at that background, how suede it looks with that impression. Really beautiful and definitely worth a try. And remember, I have the partner background which looks completely different that I can use on a card in the future. I just ran out of time for this. Now this one, this is one more stamp example that I wanted to share. It was a really simple one, but when I did this, I wanted the center to stand out a bit more. So I just applied a little bit of white pigment ink with a blending brush to the center, dried it, and then white heat embossed on top of that. So you can build up more color even after doing the faux monoprint technique. Wanted to keep it simple, so I just added a few pearls. Here's the partner one. I don't love this one. So I'm gonna go back and add a large white panel in the center with the sentiment. And I think that would, would make this one stand out a bit more. But you live and learn, and that's the only way that we can figure out what things we like to do for the future cards. Okay, so there are more ideas for doing faux monoprint. I really encourage you to try this because it is fun and very addictive. If you want to check out these products, they are linked below in my YouTube description. And you can find more videos here in the center, including my original video on faux monoprint and another one that's another way to get a similar look. Thanks for spending this time with me. Please stay safe and healthy out there. Big hugs and we'll see you again soon.